Hello students, this is an overview of how we can introduce decision making into our programs. Uh, there are two constructs that are primarily used. The first one is covered in this video, uh, that is the if statement. And the second one is covered in the second video, i.e. the case statement, which offers multiple paths based on in input value. So the way the if statement works, and you may remember from your CSP 301, is that uh, the if allows us to make a decision based on a certain condition. So here we have a condition, i.e. the program inputs a grade um, from the user and it compares the value that has been inputted with the number 70. If the value is greater than 70, then this expression gets evaluated to true and if this gets evaluated to true then the program moves to this statement that gets executed and therefore we should expect to see u passed so the components of the if statement the simple if statement are the if keyword and then the condition enclosed in the bracket this condition can be made up of uh, relational operators like a comparison greater than, greater than equal to, greater than equal to, less than, less than equal to, and also a double equal to, which is different from the assignment operator. This is called the comparison operator, whereas this one is called the, com the uh, assignment operator. So we can use these um, uh, relational operators to create a relational expression and just like any mathematical expression when this gets evaluated the result is either true or false if this results in true then the statement following gets e executed so let's just go ahead and take a look at that um, run this program and it's going to please enter an integer and then I'm going to enter the number 75, and then this says you passed. Note that there is no input validation, so I'm not going to check in this program if the user is malicious and could enter any value. It could be a negative number, it could be a number greater than 100, it could be a anything, it could be a string, it could be just about anything, and the program does not have the intelligence to actually take care of that. And we are fine with that at this point. You will see that as we go into our assignment, then we are going to introduce input validation as well. But for now, this is a simple statement. Now note that if I run this program one more time, and then I enter the number 33, then I do not get an output. The reason for that, the way the if statement works is, this statement gets executed only if this condition is true. And there's no way of, at this point, saying what will happen if this condition happens to evaluate to false. So let's introduce that and say, I would like to have a smarter program that actually tells me you failed or try next time, right? Else, I'd like this to say, try again. Try again. So here's what So let's run this one, and as you can see, this says, please enter. Now I enter 44, and it says try again. So now I've, I've built in a little more, a two-way path for this if statement. So if this condition is true, then it comes to and executes this statement, but if this condition is false, then it will execute this statement. So usually the diamond operator in your flowchart, if you remember, is the condition. And if it is true, then it executes the statement you passed. And if it's false, right, then it gets to try again. So you get the try again. So this is a two-way. So this is a, a, a two-way path. Now, Sometimes we may, uh, we may need to build 
more intelligence and we may um, uh, we may uh, like to have uh, multiple conditions that are checked. So in this video, I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to introduce uh, multiple checks, multiple conditions being tested. And the other thing I'm going to do is also introduce the concept of how to use logical operations to build in rain checking and so on. So let's go and introduce. So now we have a very simple kind of uh, rubric here. If grade is greater than 70, you say you passed. Otherwise, we say try again. I'd like to change this and say if grade is greater than 70, then I'm going to say um, The idea is that if it's greater than 90, then we'd like to say A, greater than 80, we'd like to say B, greater than 70, we'd like to say C, and if it is uh, otherwise, we would like to say try again next time. So let's go ahead and say if grade is greater than 90, then we'd like to say you got an A and else. Now here, I, this is called a nested if or a uh, multi-way if where I can introduce more conditions else if so if this statement is true if grade is greater than 90 execute this else come back and do another check else if grade is greater than 90 but um, uh, is 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 less than 90 but greater than, less than equal to 90, but greater than 80, we are going to say you got a B. And then I can introduce more by saying else if, and here I'm just going to cut and paste this and change this to 70, greater than 70, I'm going to say you've got a C, and now at the end, I'm going to have what is called the don't care clause where else there's nothing more to check. Anything less than equal to 70 is going to result in saying try again. So here I'm going to say control V try again. So you can see that my original, initially I started off with an if statement with a simple condition here. And then I added one else clause um, to take care of the condition uh, that evaluated to false here. And now I have made this if statement more and more complex in that I'm introducing more and more granularity. So if it's greater than 90, you get an A, but if it fails, I can uh, check to see if it falls between 80 and 90, and that gets to be a B. If that fails, it's not between 80 and 90, I can check to see if it's between 70 and 80, and then so. But we have to be careful if we flip this and say, let me check if it's greater than 70 and go in ascending order, we may get very surprising results. And I'm going to leave that for you to try out and think about why it may not work if I put 70, 80, and 90 here. So let's run this program. Please enter an integer. And I said 95. It says you got an A. And then run it one more time. And I say 88, you got a B. And then I run it one more time. And then I say I've got a 5, it says try again. So this seems to work. Now, um, so this is one way of using the if statement. And here I have used nested ifs, which are in the form of elif clauses, else if clauses, where I can introduce multiple condition checking and introduce more granularity. Now, I can do, now there's, there's some cases where I would like to check if a number is in a certain range, right? So, for example, if I'd like to check if a number is between 0 and 100, then that's a valid number. But if it's outside of that, then usually we don't expect a grade to be, um, you know, a strange number like negative 2 uh, or a number like 110, let's say. So therefore, we would like uh, to limit our range checking to, uh, to a number between 0 and 100. So the question is how to do that. 
we can do that by saying if you read in the grade and if say if grade is greater than or equal to zero and grade is less than equal to 100 then i would like to check and i would like to give the letter grades because if it's not between that then I, there's really nothing I can do. I would like to declare that the user has given an erroneous input. So here, as you can see, I'm actually introducing a little bit of input validation. So here's what I'm going to do is if this is the case, then see now because I've got a whole bundle of statements, I'm enclosing them in brackets. And I would like to also introduce some indentation because because this is going to get executed. So now what this does is if my grade lies in this range, I can go ahead and start giving the letter grades and uh, letter grades. Now, if you look at this, here is a relational expression, grade greater than or equal to zero. Here is another relational expression, grade less than. And I have joined these two relational expressions with what is called the logical operator, which is the AND operator. And you know that if you go ahead and do the reading from your book and from your past experience, logical operators can be not AND and OR. And this is the C++ symbol for the AND in which I can join multiple conditions to create a more complex. So I can, I can combine multiple relational expressions to make um, uh, to create a logical expression by linking them with logical operators. And so this is how I've done it. And as you can see, enter a number between, so I'm not going to listen to this and I'm going to say negative one. So nothing has happened. But if I enter the number 55, then it's going to say try again. Now, if I enter an erroneous number, I'd like to let the user know that uh, you know, this was unexpected. So I'm going to introduce an else clause and say else. Uh, just say please enter a, or I can say invalid grade. Invalid grade. Try again. So here is what I would like to say. And now this is, and I enter negative 33, and it says invalid great try again. Now note that my program is not looping. It does not have any loops at this stage. So it doesn't, it's not like a menu-driven program, which you will be doing in the assignment, uh, which will allow you to keep entering numbers till you actually get it right. There's another way of doing this. I can actually, instead of using an and, I can change this and say, well, if my, I can say that if my grade is less than zero or my grade is greater than 100, clearly this grade is out of range and I can actually move this thing and say here, hey, this one is actually invalid else. If it's not there, then I can. So both these um, pieces of code work should work exactly the same, but we have changed the condition to flip it on its head and say if it's out of range here, clearly the OR helps us to determine that if it's less than zero or greater than 100, then that's wrong and declare the error statement. Uh, otherwise, if it's not, if this is false, then the opposite is true and therefore it's in range and this should work. So this in brief is how the if statement works. And, um, and then this is basically what our uh, lab and our assignment for this week are based upon. And uh, you will find this very helpful.